Hi, this is Redneck Computer Geek, and welcome to our unboxing of the Central Machinery uh, Metal Cutting Bandsaw. We purchased this off of Harbor Freight. They're about $250 to $280. You can actually find them on Amazon on a regular basis. Northern Tools sells a comparing model, and today we're going to be unboxing it, setting it up, and maybe a minor demonstration on a couple of different types of metal. Here we go, guys. Scared. Okay. Does it say what size to use? Uh, number nine. And what the heck is a number nine? <laughs> I have no idea. I'll just, what are you ordering Chinese nine? food? <laughs> oh, it says it's nine. Sounds German. No, that'd be nada. <laughs> No, nine means no in German. Oh, okay. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> says secure the using two bolts. That's all it says. Two bolts, four flat washers, and two nuts. Good. That's helpful. I'm not even kidding. This. <laughs> it says. Okay, it says part number nine. So you switch to the part assembly spec page. Where the hell is it? There isn't one. There has got to be one. There, there is a part assembly spec page. There's got to be one. There it is. I found it. Number nine is a six millimeter by 12. Okay, which would be the smallest ones. For those of you playing the mud mower at home game, this is to attempt number three. <laughs> what well, is <it> jerk? <laughs> I got a ring finger holding the nut. I got a pinky holding a lock washer. Well, I'm still trying to pinch it with my first finger. Okay, there. You do one on your side. No, I'm good. Actually, just go ahead and grab. Okay, I'm running very slow. Just did the whole strip the Chinese bolt thing. So for those of you playing the home game, don't strip the bolts. Mm. I'll weld it if it doesn't. <laughs> when all else fails, weld it. <laughs> if it decides to move, I'll weld it. Okay, well that is really cheap and clunky, but chintzy? Yeah. It probably won't be as bad when the top is off. Okay. What is banging? The handle on the outside. Yeah. yeah. Only held in there with a couple of products. Hi guys. So this is what we had to work with. And we ended up with this chintzy little thing that I was expecting like maybe eighth inch thick steel and instead it's like sixteenth. It's the gauge that I would like use on my worst enemy to fix car parts. <laughs> But it makes a wonderful dinging sound. <laughs> Hi, next stage. <laughs> um, okay, on a serious note, I don't know who came up with this idea, but basically this is why you need three people to do this. And I've read multiple people arguing about this, and here's why. What we've got to do is we've now got to take the cast iron base, this huge ginormous thing, we've got to pick it up and we've got to set it on this extremely flimsy stand. These are 14 millimeters and they go in from the outside. So it's a 14 on the inside once it's through, you got a washer, a lock washer, and then another 14 millimeter. Um, I'm gonna leave the camera rolling during this we're going to see if we can lift it up on. Donovan's going to do his best to get the bolts put through. And we're going to try not to kill anybody. Sounds easy enough. Works harder, not harder. And I am going to lift it and come around and you guide. Because yeah. I'm betting that, I'm betting if I get my hand in under there, because that's away from the pitch point. All right. Okay, wait, wait. Roll it. Roll it. No. 
You got my end on? My end is not. Okay, Don, Don keep your fingers out. Wait. Fingers out till his drops. Hold on. Not sure if we got it. Yep, we got it. Let me back off for a sec. Actually, this is interesting. Once we got it on, it actually pinched it. Yep. Maybe they did know what they were doing. Called it. <laughs> Johnny, look, I found Thor. Just one of those little inserts. This is Thor, as we call him in the shop. It's a seven and a half pound lead mallet. And it's great for moving metal when metal doesn't want to move. It's a great for Sweden. Johnny, you gonna help me? Okay, that was close. <laughs> music producers need to license a sample of banging, we can help. Contact the Redneck Computer Geek. Well, I buy my stuff from Harbor Freight because I get it at an ultra cheap rate. <laughs> there, I put rap music into the video. This is what you get when you build a product made in a third world country put together by first world idiots. <laughs> Okay, so once we got it up and on, it was really a lesson in contortionism. Um, in order to get the two that are on the very end, I ended up having to get a ratchet in order to get up in there. There's an electrical cord in the way on this end, and getting to this end is just plain a pain in the neck. Otherwise than that, the other four, two on each side, went on really easy with just a couple of regular wrenches. But the other two really had to have a ratchet for them. Okay, so I just got this mounted up. And underneath here, there's a screw that goes into the side under this spindle. Now, it seems that you have to actually remove one of the screws and then mount this plate. Now, I don't know if this is a normal thing for these Harbor Freights, but I had to actually take the whole motor assembly, undo all four bolts, and slide it up into this assembly to make it work. Now, we're going to be cutting. Um, we're going to be cutting mostly steel, so we're going to set it for cutting regular alloy steel. Which, in this case, if you read the directions, is large on the spindle and small on this. So what we do is we take and we pull the motor and we jump the belt and then jump the belt again and then set the motor back. Now underneath this side here there is actually a bolt to go through in order to tension this up and we're going to do that next. Alright, so before I turn this on for the first time the one thing I'm going to state is this is a lot smaller than I expected it to be. Now I know that my head is probably off camera and that's because I'm a little bit over six foot one and that gives you a perspective of the size of the machine. Now I'm still very happy with it even if I did have to fix some things that came broken. Uh, the power switch was broken. The knob on top of here, there's, uh, there's half of it sitting here somewhere. The shroud on the motor I'm expecting to make some noise because it's bent right around where the fan is. And I have some random screws that I'm not quite sure what they went to because I can't find them in the directions anymore. Um, I'm not going to try and demonstrate the vertical setup because that's probably not how I'm going to use it most of the time. I'm going to use it mostly for cutting off stuff. But it does have a vertical platform. of which bolts on like such. 
in order to be able to cut stuff up in here. And that's a feature that I really like. And another reason why I bought this model. Now the problem with that, if you're cutting vertical, is that this is where it sits when you're cutting vertical. So you've got to straddle this and kick over everything you can in order to be able to use it in the vertical stance. So I will probably make a seat out of an old lawn tractor or something that sits right here for in case I ever have to use this vertically for an extended period of time. But otherwise than that, we're going to kick it over. What could go wrong? random piece So that's interesting, it shuts off, and that's because it's got a little nub here that hits this. It looks easily removable, and for all you safety nuts, I hate to say it, but I'm probably going to remove it. So that cut off nice. We're going to go to get a piece of steel stock in order to try. Hi, right, so we got a couple of random pieces in order to try. We've got a regular piece of half inch, like what you would buy at Home Depot. Regular piece of one inch, like what you would buy at Home Depot. And another piece of one inch, like what you would buy at Home Depot. Now I'd like to say that one of the reasons why it is I want one of these units is because I am sick of cuts like this one from my chop saw that are crooked as can be. So here we go. First we're going to try the half inch, just cut a chunk off the end of it. Now before anybody yells at me, yes I know I should be using cutting oil. I'm going to be buying a high-end cutting blade for this, so I'm just throwing it through right now. But that cut off, slick as can be, very close to square actually. Okay, so we got a piece of one inch angle iron here. That went absolutely beautiful. There's no burring. Very impressed. So 
So here we are, we got our one inch square stock. This is what I'll be doing a lot of my next power wheel build with. And it'll be nice to go and have this. So. the saw blade back on. So at this point this is blade jump number four in just trying to cut one piece of metal. So I figured I'd show you how easy it is to put the blade back on I guess. In order to put the blade back on you set it into these two roller wheels. You push in and set the bottom. Put a finger down here that you know is going to get sliced. And up top, have the tension set all the way down and press the blade on. Like so. Now tension it. And I've been rather loose on my tension I've set so far. So this time I'm going to really torque it up and we'll see what happens. Okay, that's about as tight as I can possibly get it, so let's try again. I'm not going to bother moving the workpiece because I've literally just nicked it every single time. So obviously it is what it is. It's a cheap, cheap bandsaw. It's going to need some adjustment. It's going to need some work. The fact I jumped the blade in the first four or five times worth of trying to use it could just be it wasn't torqued down correctly at factory. It could be I didn't torque it down after reading directions twice. The last time when I torqued it down, I literally put it on just as good and tight as I possibly could and ended up working. It also could be the fact that it's a cheap blade that's on it. Maybe once I put on a good blade, I won't have these problems. Um, thanks guys. And I appreciate you watching everything and hopefully you'll subscribe to my channel for more interesting stuff. Have a good day.